Hello and welcome to this Base14 tutorial for Base14.com. My name is Tyler Kupfer and today I'm going to be talking about hand-drawn animation in Adobe Flash. So here at Base14, we've made a lot of films with Flash and our most recent film, The Girl in the Fox, specifically was made using hand-drawn animation. So Flash is really ideally suited for the tween animation where you create elements and symbols and then have the computer uh, interpolate motion between them, but you can also do hand-drawn animation to give you a more traditional style. And that's what we developed for Girl in the Fox. So today I'm going to be taking you over some of the strategies and techniques that we used in order to accomplish that. It's very similar to traditional animation that you would do on paper. There's just a few advantages that we get from working digitally. Of course, this functionality isn't unique to Flash alone. There's other more specifically aimed 2D hand-drawn uh, software packages such as Toon Boom and Flipbook which are more ideally suited. But the good thing about Flash is it's a little bit more accessible and uh, with just a few uh, extra tricks you can get some pretty good results. So let's go ahead and get started. This is what we're going to be working on today. Um, it's very simple rough animation from a shot of Ilona, the protagonist of The Girl in the Fox. And essentially what I'm going to be showing you is how you would start with uh, two rough keys and how you would draw the in-between frames. So here I have the basic starting file, which has the two um, main poses that I've already drawn for you. You can download this file uh, from a link below on my website. So let's start out by talking about a little bit of animation terminology. Now there's three types of drawings. There are keyframes, which I've already generated two keyframes for you here. These are the main keys or drawings that define your action. After that there's breakdowns, which are essentially drawings that determine how you're getting between different keyframes. And after that, there's in-betweens. In-betweens are just more uh, technical drawings that allow you to smoothly get between keyframes and breakdowns. Sometimes in-betweening can be done purely in the cleanup phase. You'll see in this file that I've included the cleanup drawings for both of these two roughs. So eventually, once you work, have finished working in rough animation, you go in and you create a cleaned up version of the drawing. After that, you apply a paint layer, which we'll save for another tutorial. Of course, the important thing is to be working in rough form first before you get into the nitty-gritty of uh, the cleanup details. First off, let's discuss briefly the different drawing tools that are available in Flash. There are essentially two freehand drawing tools. The pencil tool, which creates uniform vector lines, and the paintbrush tool, which creates fills. They're also in vector form, but the important difference is that if you look at both of these with the direct selection tool, the pencil tool is single dots uh, connected by uh, lines, and the uh, paintbrush tool creates uh, boundary lines that are all filled in with a color. So really what that means is that with the paintbrush tool we can get variation in our stroke. Now in order to get this you have to do two important things. First of all you have to be working on a pressure sensitive tablet like a Cintiq or an Intuos or a Bamboo tablet. Secondly you have to make sure that you enable these two things. Use pressure and use tilt, although use pressure is probably the most important. You see that this turns my cursor into a crosshair, and now what happens is if I press lightly, I get a thin line, and if I press more firmly, I get a thicker line. Now one disadvantage to working in Flash compared to other programs like Toon Boom or working with real media is that you don't get layers of opacity. So usually if I had a pencil and I worked lightly, I'd get very light lines and I could build up on those to get thicker lines. But in Flash, your line's always the same opacity. So the only thing we have really available to us is the thickness of the line. It's kind of like working in ballpoint pen or felt tip marker. It's not ideal, but we can make it work for now. The other thing I'll point out is that when you're using the paintbrush tool, by default, Flash will have you set to 50 over here on the smoothing in the properties panel. That gives the lines a very vectorized, weird Flash look that I personally don't like. So I try to set it down to 20 or 25. If you set smoothing all the way down to zero, it's going to make the file sizes astronomical. So 20 is a good median point. So animation all occurs down here in the timeline. You've got uh, a layer which can contain different parts of art, and you can make multiple layers to separate your animation if you want to, although in rough animation we don't uh, mess around with that too much. And inside each layer you have certain frames. Uh, in Flash these are called keyframes, and you'll see that each dot represents a keyframe. Uh, and for these purposes, each one of those dots represents a different drawing. And now I need to create drawings that represent the, air, the motion in between the poses. So in order to get started, I'm going to create a new empty frame. 
So I'm going to right click on this area and say insert blank keyframe. And what that does is it inserts a uh, empty white frame that allows me to start drawing. Now in the days of traditional animation on paper, the animators would flip between drawings and allow themselves to try to guess where an in-between drawing would go. In a digital space, we can now scrub between the drawings, or on the keyboard I can use the greater than or less than keys to jump back and forth. So what I want to do next is I want to scrub back and forth to try to get a good idea of where the motion is, and then as I do this I try to keep sort of a visual uh, memory to uh, allow me to draw the next drawing. So once I've scrubbed it enough, I can start kind of to take a guess at where that head will be. Again, this is rough animation. So a lot of what you're doing is trying to feel out the emotion and uh, gesture of the animation as it moves. You don't have to be too concerned about getting a super accurate technical drawing. What you're doing is you're scrubbing back and forth and trying to feel out the motion. This is very different from uh, when we get down into more specific in-betweening where we will be technically just making drawings that average themselves between uh, the other drawings that have already been made. Now I am having this character do a kind of a compression down, kind of a look down. Now, for the purposes of this tutorial, I apologize, I won't be doing my very best animation, but you'll get the general idea. All right, so I've got something at least I can start with. In addition to scrubbing, I can play it back in real time just by hitting the enter key in Flash. And in this case, I'm going to drag out this keyframe so you can see it lasts two frames, because right now I'm going to be animating in what's called twos. So each frame lasts at the minimum uh, two frames. Each drawing lasts two frames. So this at least gives me a good idea for how she's moving between these two. So this is what's considered my breakdown. And if I want to label these, I can uh, just by typing over here onto the name label area. And I can give this a B additionally for breakdown. So now I know where my keys are, I know where my breakdowns are. Now I can start creating more in-between drawings. So I'm going to hit F7 again and uh, in order to make a new empty keyframe. And then in this case, because the motion's starting to become so close to each other, uh, the breakdown it was good just to cite because I was moving between two farther apart drawings. But now I'm getting so close between these, I'm going to need to turn on onion skinning. And onion skinning is a super useful tool that emulates the uh, light tables of traditional animation. And it's down here. You've got two options. You've got normal onion skinning and you've got onion skin outlines. And for these purposes we're going to turn on normal onion skinning and it can show me uh, different drawings simultaneously. So this is really useful for knowing how close my motion follows itself. So the next thing I'm going to do is try to figure out uh, where these different parts of the drawing, uh, where this new drawing would be if it was averaged between these two. So for example, there's her eye in the first frame, and there's her eye in the second frame. So I can create a kind of squinting eye that's halfway between them. Now, how, if whether you're exactly halfway between or whether you're uh, a third of the way there, that all affects your timing and the emotion and uh, how the character seems to move. Um, that's a lot of a more artistic discussion that we won't get into in this tutorial, uh, but it's important to creating a style of animation down the road. So, but again, I'm going to stay very rough. Because the good thing about working rough is that it gives you kind of the freedom to not feel uh, burdened by making mistakes. So, I'm going to turn off onion skinning. I can kind of see that I have a, a little bit smoother motion there. Now, let's go ahead and add another breakdown here. I'm sorry, not a breakdown. A, uh, in between. Turn on onion skinning again and look at the approximation of these two frames.
Now, sometimes there's so many lines, it's kind of hard to tell uh, where one drawing is and where the other drawing is. And this works a little bit well in a package like Toonville, where it shows you which fr frames are behind you and which frames are in front of you. And at this point, this is where it's important to start watching the motions and specifically seeing how certain features move. Like, I can see uh, how her hairline should be moving. So the important thing about using onion skinning at this stage is it kind of gives me a starting point for the base geometry. And then as I scrub back and forth, I can fill other features in more accurately. Like, I can see that I drew her mouth not very well here, so I can correct that. Now the other thing we want to be uh, working on here is the timing specifically. So while I'm also scrubbing, I also want to be playing it back to see how this action is taking place. So if I wanted to, for example, have a slower start, I can add another breakdown by selecting all of these keys and moving them over, and again pressing F7 to get a new empty drawing. I'm sorry, not another breakdown, I can add another keyframe here, and make this start even slower. Again, trying to work uh, super rough here, and extra rough just to keep this tutorial moving along. But you can see that even though these drawings are pretty rough, I can still see the motion, which is the most important thing at this stage, to understand how the character is moving and how it's being timed. So another useful thing uh, with the onion skinning that I definitely should point out is you can change how many frames you can see by dragging these uh, brackets out. So I can see the whole animation if I want to and how she moves through this, or I can limit it all the way down to just the frames outside of me. So this is really useful if I want to see uh, one other frame back and see how the eye is progressing here. I can see that there, then it's here, and then it's here, and then it's here. So I can uh, really... Uh, fine-tune my timing if I'd like to. Another useful feature of working in the digital world is you can duplicate frames and use those as uh, base drawings. So I'm going to delete this because it's not a key anymore. So for example, if I want to just do a little tiny bit of uh, overlap here, I can use this duplicated frame and grab my lasso tool and just select just her head, for example, get the transform tool, move this orientation point, and then rotate her head just a little bit. And so these are ways of quickly uh, doing rough animation that tries to give you a better idea of um, minute changes in motion. And the good news is about this, while this looks a little bad in rough animation because we can see how the body is not changing, when we come back in and do cleanup for this, the cleanup will be forced to draw every frame individually. So there's a lot of cheats we can take in rough animation just in order to keep the process moving along and to experiment, and then cleanup is really where the quality comes in. So once you're done with rough animation and the motion all looks good to you, the next step would be to clean up your drawings. Now an essential step in this is making sure that your drawings are on model. For that, in our productions we use model sheets, which show us exactly how to draw the different details of the characters and features and what proportions the character has. Uh, this is always important in any professional production to make sure that when you're working across several artists, everything looks like it's consistent. In this example, I've provided for you two uh, cleaned up frames already. And I'm just going to show you really quickly how I would uh, do that sort of cleanup drawing. So I'm going to unlock the cleanup area and lock the rough animation area, although keep it visible because that's what I'm going to use. And I'll go ahead and delete this frame so that we can work from it again. I'm going to change my paint color to black because that's what I use for cleanup. And then I'm going to uh, make the rough animation 
uh, an outline form so I can see my lines a little bit better. And I'm going to zoom in here because when you're working in cleanup, the quality of your line begins to matter a lot more than rough animation. So working zoomed in is more important. Where rough animation, it's more important to work zoomed out so that you can overall see how your character is moving within the space. Now I'm going to start by doing my cleanup, just trying to work on the eyes and work on the facial features. And I'm going to be working a lot slower than I would be in the rough process. Because again, the rough process is about the motion, and cleanup is about the quality of the line and the design of the character. So as I work here, I'm kind of trying to approximate how the animator was working with the drawing. Uh, I don't have a sp specific line, because now it becomes my job to try, try to decide where that final line is based on the drawing of the animator. You can do any number of uh, cleanup and rough animation passes, so maybe there's just one rough animation and that's what you use to begin with, or maybe there's a rough animation and then a slightly cleaned up animation and then another cleaned up animation. It kind of depends on how the overall style is going to be delivered. Now with Girl and the Fox, we have essentially three steps. We've got the very rough animation, we have got the cleanup drawings like I'm doing right here, and then later on, another artist comes in and paints the animation. Of course, an important aspect of cleanup is making sure that your strokes are clear and smooth. Because this is what's going to be influencing the final art that goes in the movie. Sometimes I even have to add in details, like the separation between the arm and the, sh and the chest here. So now I've got a basic cleanup model. I'll go ahead and fix a couple of these details. Don't ever be afraid to use the eraser where you might need it. And now I can turn off my rough animation layer and check how that looks. Not bad. The one thing I've forgotten is her eyebrows, so I'll go ahead and add those back in. Always make sure you're working on the right layer. I made this eyebrow too long, so I'm going to delete some of it. Nice. So obviously you would repeat this process over and over again as much as you need. And again, sometimes if you want really precise in-between drawings, you should just be doing that in the cleanup phase instead of in the rough animation phase. Because when you get really close, it's essentially a matter of averaging the lines between. Well, hopefully this tutorial has been helpful in teaching you a little bit about how we accomplished our animation for the girl in the box. Some of it was also done in Toon Boom, but using primarily the same process. You can always check out more tutorials on our YouTube channel. And until next time, I'm Tyler Kupfer, and thanks for watching.